Hello, I'm Mario Anderson and welcome to In Focus Kentucky where we take a look at issues that matter to you right here in the Bluegrass State and we'll talk with the lawmakers, community organizers, and people like you who help shape those policies. On today's episode, we're broadcasting from the city of Richmond, Kentucky in Madison County where we recap the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump's first visit as commander in chief to the Bluegrass State. The president's visit to Richmond, Kentucky comes as incumbent Representative Andy Barr, a Republican, faces Marine fighter pilot Amy McGrath, a Democrat, in a hotly contested race in the 6th Congressional District. Trump's visit to Kentucky is the first time a sitting president has visited the Commonwealth since George W. Bush visited Hopkinsville, Kentucky, to discuss Social Security reform in 2005. Before that, Bill Clinton spoke to students at Audubon Elementary in Owensboro in 2000 as part of his school reform tour. Now before you hear from President Trump himself, there was a lot of planning by emergency management agencies here in Madison County and I spoke with EKU staff to find out how a university that sits inside of a town of just over 30,000 people plans for a presidential visit to campus. Uh, the university in 2013 uh, was a host to, we invited uh, the sitting first lady, Michelle Obama, at the time, and we invited her to campus to speak at one of our commencements. And for us, a, a large venue, a large event on campus, rather, is our commencement ceremonies. Well, her, she was the uh, keynote speaker at one of our uh, commencement ceremonies, so we had commencement ceremonies surrounding uh, the commencement ceremony for which she was going to speak at. So what that uh, allowed us to do is have the opportunity to practice the ebb and flow of mass amounts of individuals visiting our campus uh, multiple times throughout that day. And the planning efforts that went into having a sitting first lady here at our institution largely helped us prepare for having a sitting president come to our institution. So the same plans that we enacted in 2013 were brought off the shelf, dusted off, and certainly enhanced for a sitting president. Mackinnon says some of the enhanced security measures included extensive plans to protect not only the president, but the thousands of people who were expected to start arriving to the campus many hours before the campaign rally event started. As we prepare for these events, we'll have uh, changes in planning processes, we'll have changes in our infrastructure with enhancements such as concrete blocks, uh, K rails, water filled barriers, things of that nature. Uh, we also have fenced off certain areas in and around campus so to keep people away from this area but also to channel and funnel the way foot traffic will uh, ebb and flow on campus. Mackinnon says well over a hundred plus people from various emergency management departments within Madison County were involved with the pre-planning and execution for such a major public safety event. The partnerships that we have with our local emergency response community are absolutely critical uh, to making sure that this event goes off as smoothly as can be possible. Uh, it takes a community of uh, emergency response agencies, everyone from various local law enforcement agencies to state law enforcement agencies, fire department, uh, emergency management officials, emergency medical services, healthcare, and the list goes on and on. Uh, it takes it takes an entire community to wrap their hands around a situation like this to come together, to work together, uh, to have the best possible outcome that we can have. President Donald Trump spoke to a crowd of over 6,000 people inside of Alumni Coliseum and another several hundred people actually watched his rally from outside on the video board. Here's what some of what the president had to say during the rally. Forces in the world that are playing on the thing are going to elect 
and a credible slate of Republican candidates to protect your jobs, defend your borders, and continue making America great again. Just hours ago, we celebrated another tremendous victory for the American people. You know what I'm talking about. We're having a lot of victories, folks. Can you handle it? In the Oval Office of the White House, I welcome home Pastor Andrew Brunson, great man from Turkey. He is now free from jail. Think of that, 35-year jail sentence, 35 years, not anymore. He's back with his family, together with his wife, and he is on American soil. And it's a beautiful family, they're all together. And I want to thank President Erdogan, Turkey. He was, uh, he was terrific. They all worked together. Wasn't easy, wasn't easy. That one wasn't easy. We don't pay ransom. We don't pay ransom. But I do. I want to thank the president. And I want to thank the people of Turkey. And I think we'll probably now really establish a terrific relationship with Turkey. We appreciate it. Coming up after the break, you'll hear more from President Trump, and the president wasn't the only major political figure that made a stop in the Bluegrass State recently. We'll explain who else made a visit to Kentucky the same weekend as President Trump. That's next on In Focus, Kentucky.